Hey everybody, Zian over here from Nintendo Life. Many people remember the Game Boy for games like Tetris, Pokemon, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, and Super Mario Land. Each of these games were perfect for quick pick up and play sessions, regardless of if you had five minutes to play or even 50. And they weren't the only gems that the Game Boy had to offer. With a selection of over a thousand titles, of course some great games were gonna slip under the general public's radar. Scope. Picture this, the year is 1996, the Nintendo 64 just launched that summer in Japan, and kids were officially starting to come down with Pokemon Fever as Red and Green released on the Game Boy earlier that year. Sure, the Nintendo 64 only had a handful of games available at the time, but everyone was still glued to their handhelds, and nobody was really swapping in and out cartridges either due to the fact that once you pop a Pokemon game into your Game Boy, a contract is made, and you're not able to remove it until you at least log in 50 hours worth of gameplay, or you complete half of the Pokédex. At least that's what I read in a magazine way back in the day. And you know, that would explain a lot. So imagine trying to be a smart, simple, and straightforward passion project like Mole Mania that year. How are you supposed to compete with the likes of Super Mario 64 and Charizard? And even with Shigeru Miyamoto helming this project, they didn't even stand a chance. Fast forward one year to 1997, and in North America, which was when the game released here, you now have GoldenEye, Mario Kart 64, and Final Fantasy VII all to compete with. And our little burrowing buddies just couldn't compete. Mole Mania never really got the attention it deserved, but that wasn't the fault of the developers. The small team consisted of Shigeru Miyamoto as the producer, Masayuki Kamiyama as the director, who also actually happened to direct Donkey Kong 94, and a bunch of the members that worked on Donkey Kong 94 actually also worked on Mole Mania. Some of the developers also worked on Mother 1 and 2, and then went on to work on future projects with Nintendo like Eternal Darkness and some of the Hamtaro games. So instead of burying this gem with the likes of other relics of the past, today we're going to shine a spotlight on this classic. There's a lot of love packed into this game by the developers, and is still 100% worth revisiting in the modern age. So let me tell you why. The core gameplay of Mole Mania is simple. Taking a top-down perspective, your goal is to navigate a maze of rooms until you make it to the end. You're able to move around on screen freely, and since you're a mole, you're able to burrow underground to navigate under and around obstacles found on the surface. You can use this to hide from enemies or to tunnel a path to an item that's out of reach. You can also push and pull certain items around on screen as well, like a barrel, which can be pushed into a hole to create a walking path, or a weight, which can create a barricade to prevent something from moving. The ball is going to be your best friend. You can push and pull it however you'd like, and as I mentioned before, it'll almost always be your key to getting out of the room you're currently in. And if you accidentally lose it by rolling it off into a hole, it'll always respawn in a particular place too. While you don't have many other abilities per se as a mole, the well-crafted level design proves that you can do a lot with so little, and each of the eight different levels will introduce a new mechanic into the mix for you to try and master. The first level allows you to get to grips with the overall controls and teaches you the mechanics of pushing and pulling the ball, which are pretty simple, but there's, there's many ways to use it. Level 2 introduces spike strips that can't be walked over and will stop a rolling ball dead in their tracks. Level 3 brings on the weight object, which can only be pushed and never pulled. Level 4 brings along the barrel, which functions a lot like the ball, which will get stuck if it's thrown into a hole, but then can be walked over. All of these mechanics can feel overwhelming at first, but over time, you'll learn how to utilize them to their fullest. Each level will also end with a unique boss fight, ranging from a kangaroo that can leap up to the heavens and back, to a mechanic who has a sick obsession with whipping wrenches at moles. Literally, that's what he says. How messed up is that? As twisted and weird as some of these bosses can be, they also sort of remind us of the Legend of Zelda series. It's almost like this whole game really is some strange dream Link's having. But Nintendo would never do something like that, right? <laughs> Come on. As the levels progress, so of course does the difficulty. Some rooms can be completed quickly, while others may require a bit more work for your brain. Sometimes you'll look at a puzzle and think, I have no idea how I'm ever going to be able to figure this out. Thankfully, each puzzle can always be viewed within the full window of the Game Boy's screen, so you can sit and process the puzzle for as long as you need. Even though the stopwatch on the pause screen felt like it was taunting me to hurry up every now and then. Pick up the pace, man! People are going to think you suck at video games! But I do suck at video games! 
Speaking of being terrible at games, I also have yet to make my way through Mole Mania entirely. I'm not ashamed of it either. The game is tough as nails, and I didn't want to make my brain cry or explode from the sheer struggle of some of these puzzles. There were a few rooms in level 5 where I just completely was stumped and didn't have the mental capacity to keep trying. However, I'm still really, really enjoying my time with Mole Mania, and I want to look back on this game fondly, not have it shrouded in a negative light due to the way I could have rushed to play it instead. I think this game is best digested in small intervals, and with how often the game saves, you can totally play a few rooms and then put it down for a while, and pick it back up whenever you want. If you do happen to struggle like I did, you'll be happy to hear that Mole Mania is extremely forgiving. You do have a life bar that'll dwindle if you bump into an enemy, and you'll get a game over if you take too many hits, but within each level are points with a health refill that you can revisit whenever you'd like. It'll just require a bit of backtracking each each time. Every level also houses 20 cabbage to find, which can be collected by simply rolling them into a hole. If you gather up to 5 of them, you'll get rewarded with a portion of health as well, which can come in handy in a pinch. Every time you finish a room, the game will also save your progress. So if you get stumped on a particular puzzle, like I said, you'll be able to put it down and pick it back up whenever you want. And if you happen to hit a game over, you'll just be sent back to the last room you completed. It's very uncommon for a game from back in the day like this to actually respect the player's time so adamantly, but it's very much appreciated. For the completionist out there, there are a hundred total points you can earn within each level. 10 points for collecting each the map and the locator, 20 points for uncovering the entire map, 40 points for collecting all the cabbage, and another 20 points for completing the bonus stage. And boy, let me tell you, those bonus stages are a doozy. These end up becoming a test of speed against the big bad guy Jinbi, who we'll talk more about soon. Essentially, you'll rush to shove all the cabbage on screen into holes before Jinbi can essentially uh, beat you to death. You'll have a set amount of time to do it, and every time Jinbi whacks you with his hoe, you'll lose time off your clock. Meanwhile, Jinbi is covering up any holes you make for your cabbage. Later levels can get pretty frustrating as Jinbi is way faster than he looks. Like, he's so fast. What? Why? You can throw cabbage at him, stunning him temporarily, but good luck actually lining him up for a hit. Thankfully, these levels are entirely optional and they'll have no bearing on your progress, except for some extra points by the end of the day. Now the story isn't that important to the overall game, but its wackiness helps propel you towards the finish line. You play as a mole named Muddy, whose wife and kids have just been kidnapped by the big bad farming poacher person, I, I guess I don't even really know what he is, but his name is Jinbi. We don't even know why he took him in the first place, but if we want to get him back, we'll have to head off to Jinbi land to solve the puzzles he's laid out for us and take down his cohorts. On your journey, you'll encounter signposts to give you advice, and most of which which are written by Grandpa, who I'm assuming must be Muddy's father, but the manual won't tell us his real name, so it beats me. He also reminds me a bit of Cranky Kong from Donkey Kong Country, but that could just be due to the fact that he's old and, well, frankly, I mean, he's cranky. These signs will give you hints and a bit of comic relief every now and then. Take for example this row of four signposts. The first three actually help you out, and then the last one is just a, just a straight up joke. Then there's another sign that tries to teach you about how to peek through the ground and tells you to be a peeping Tom. Please don't do this in real life. Please don't do this ever. But also, if any of you have bought the 3DS eShop re-release of this for $3, please let me know in the comments below if you found out if Nintendo has kept this line in the game. They couldn't have, right? It's insane. Why would they do that? Remember those health points that I mentioned earlier that are scattered throughout the levels? Well, Grandpa is actually the one maintaining those little stations. He basically just has a little stall and he gives you health there. But if you happen to ask him five additional times for more health after he's already given you some, he'll legitimately give you a game over screen. I, I couldn't believe it. Thankfully though, it doesn't really matter as the game auto saves after each room, but it was still surprising to see it nonetheless. Every time you defeat a boss, you'll be reunited with one of Muddy's kids as well, and a silly little cutscene will play out, to which Muddy will somehow usually make a fool of himself, but it's always nice to see how happy he is to be reunited with his family. The soundtrack has some great melodies too, even though it does have a tendency to grate on you every now and then. Especially Especially when you get stuck on a particular puzzle and you keep hearing a certain jingle over and over and over again. And on top of this, the sound effect that plays when you're low on health and you're likely to turn the volume all the way down. 
The sweeping melody that plays during level 2 stands above the rest of the soundtrack for me though, and it turns out that the composer actually went on to work on the soundtrack of F-Zero X on Nintendo 64, and now works as a sound designer at Nintendo on games like Breath of the Wild and Ring Fit Adventure. Now if you've been wondering, Xeon, well this game is in color, I thought this came out on the Game Boy. Well that's all thanks to the fact that Mole Mania is actually boosted by the power of the Super Game Boy. Mole Mania launched a few years after the Super Game Boy was already out, and takes nearly full advantage of the hardware. Levels will change color depending on the theme, and cutscenes and menus are colored in as well, to give the whole experience more life. And the border also features what I'm assuming is some mole of a <clears throat> higher power, peering down to the surface world to keep tabs on our little pal Muddy. Now my only real complaint with the game is how easy and deflating it can be to make a mistake. When you accidentally dig a hole in a place you didn't mean to or send a ball rolling in the wrong direction, this can instantly disrupt your flow and halt your current progress within a room. You can simply walk out of a room and walk back in to reset everything, but you'll have to try and retrace your steps to get to the point you just were within the puzzle. A simple rewind feature would ease a lot of headache if Mole Mania ever gets a re-release down the road. Hopefully if Game Boy games ever come to Nintendo Switch Online, we'll likely get a rewind feature that way, and maybe even the color from the Super Game Boy version of the game will come along with it. At least we can hope. Mole Mania is a great example of a game that was just dealt a bad hand. Its characters are charming in their own weird way. The gameplay is simplistic in nature, but offers a slew of puzzle box style levels to keep anyone busy for hours. And it's always nice to get your hands on a game that Miyamoto and his team worked on that you never knew about prior. The majority of Miyamoto's games often grow into something larger, or at least get a second or third entry in their series, but Mole Mania, regardless of its efforts, seems to be forever stuck on the Game Boy. And even though Masayuki Kamiyama seems to have never gone on to direct or work on any other games, this was an absolute high note to end it all on. So if you're a fan of the well-crafted levels in Donkey Kong 94 or are just looking for another retro oddity, I think you'll dig Mole Mania. And I'm not just saying that because it's on the box. Feel free to let us know in the comments down below if you've ever given Mole Mania a shot yourself or you think it's something you're going to try and go and dig up now. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, then why don't you go ahead and steal the wife and kids of that subscribe button and then ring that notification bell to be notified whenever we put up a new video. That's a really sad narrative. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there and we will see you next time. Oh,